Let me ask you all something. Do you believe there is another player in NBA history who even comes close to the legendary superhuman status that Wilt Chamberlain holds in the minds of many today? I don't think there is. And in fact, to take it a step further, I would go as far as to say that there has never been another season in the history of sports where a player has put up the type of absurd individual statistical dominance that Wilt Chamberlain put up in the year 1962, the year when he averaged 50 points a game along with 26 rebounds, an absolute monstrous anomaly of a season even for a player like Wilt Chamberlain who was no stranger to absurdly high point per game seasons. However, while there are many who still regard Wilt Chamberlain as one of the all-time greats and hold this season to be one of, if not the, greatest individual seasons in the history of basketball, there are many more who do not have this man or his incredible season in such high regard. And the reason for this is how the NBA has changed. It has been nearly 60 years since Wilt Chamberlain put up these absurd numbers, and the NBA has changed drastically. Pace is much, much lower than it once was, and players' minutes have decreased by a massive amount compared to the huge amount of minutes they played back in the 60s. Because of this, there is a whole lot of controversy about how good Wilt Chamberlain would really be today and what numbers he would put up playing under the restrictions of the modern NBA superstar. I wanted to know the answer, and since all the stats on Reddit were both outdated and inconsistent, I realized I was just going to have to sit down and do the math myself. So that's exactly what I did. And rather than hoarding this precious knowledge, I decided to generously share it with you, my gracious viewers who are so thankful they liked this video and subscribed to my channel if they hadn't already. So without further ado, let's get in to what Wilt Chamberlain stats would be in the year 2021. The process of adjusting Wilt Chamberlain stats to the modern day involves two relatively simple calculations. First, I had to adjust the pace, and then I had to adjust the minutes per game which Wilt played. Let's start with the pace. In the year 1962, the NBA pace was absurdly high at 126.2. That fell steadily until around the late 90s, early 2000s, and then has continuously risen again until today, when in the year 2021, the NBA's pace of play was at 99.2, significantly lower than it was in Wilt Chamberlain's era. In fact, the exact pace adjustment is 0.786. Or, in simple terms, it's about 79% of what it was in Wilt Chamberlain's day. Then we have to adjust his minutes. Wilt Chamberlain played what is still, and probably always will be, the most minutes in a season in NBA history in the year 1962, when he played 48.5 minutes a game that season. A ridiculous number, which he absolutely would not come close to playing today. Since the current highest minutes per game player in the league is Julius Randle, who played about 37 minutes a game, I decided to just adjust Wilt Chamberlain's stats to the per 36. It makes it easy for me, and it makes it easy for you. That is a .75 adjustment from this season. So. Wilt Chamberlain's original stats of 50.4 points, 25.7 rebounds, and 2.4 assists now changes to 29.2 points, 15.2 rebounds, and 1.4 assists, still shooting 51% from the field and 61% from the free throw line. Now, while these numbers are a massive drop-off, 21 points and 11 rebounds to be exact, they're still pretty freaking impressive, 
29 and 15 is a slight improvement on what Joel Embiid has been putting up for the last several seasons. And since Joel Embiid should be a consensus top 10 player and superstar in the league, it's pretty safe to say that Wilt Chamberlain would be an absolute freaking beast if he played today. A very efficient 29 points and 11 rebounds, along with very good defense, and I'm very sad, I'm saying very too much, I'm very sad to say that we don't have this dude's blocks numbers because they're probably somewhere between four and seven blocks a game, which would still lead the league when adjusted to the modern stats. This dude was a beast on both ends of the floor, and even when you take away the massive numbers he was once putting up, they're still really impressive in the year 2021. Now, that was Wilt Chamberlain's 1962 season, and after adjusting the stats, they're still absolutely incredible numbers, just not the level of historic ridiculousness they were before. But what happens when we adjust his entire career averages to the modern NBA? Well, we take his career averages of 30 points, 23 rebounds, and 4.4 assists, along with 46 minutes a game. And we adjust those to today, and the numbers we get are... 18.5 points, 14 rebounds, and 2.7 assists on 54% field goal shooting and 51% from the free throw line. Yay! Now look, obviously there is a lot of context that people need to acknowledge more with Will Chamberlain's career. In the second half of his career, he was... I, don't, I wouldn't call him a role player, but much less of the superstar score he once was. On the Lakers, he was much more of a playmaking big man who focused on rebounds and defense. Same thing with the end of his Sixers career. So for his points to fall off this much, while understandable, it still just looks wrong. Wilt Chamberlain averaging 18.5 points for his career? The rebounds at 14 a game for his career are great. 54% from the field is great. 2.7 assists isn't even that bad for a big man. 51% from the free throw line is absolutely pathetic, but, you know, that is what it is. But 18 and a half points, man, that's a drop off. I mean, he goes from the second leading scorer all time to not even close to the top. Obviously, when making these changes, there are a whole lot of intangibles that I just wasn't able to take into account. I can't adjust who Will Chamberlain might have played with in the modern day, how defense is different, how offense is different, how his game might have changed, how his conditioning and how long he was able to play might have changed. But here's what I can do. I can take the exact numbers he took, and I can mathematically adjust them to today. And when you adjust them, his stats just aren't as all-time great and impressive as they once were. They're just not. Is Wilt Chamberlain still a phenomenal NBA player, ranked very highly when you adjust his stats? Yes. Yes, he is. He still had a ridiculously good peak. His defense, while not calculatable very well because of the fact that they didn't record steals or blocks, was one of the best in NBA history, and his offense at his peak was still up there with the very best superstars in the game today. But at the end of the day, he had a very significant drop-off. And what you take away from this video, that's your deal. If you still think Will Chamberlain is one of the best players ever, I cannot fault you for that. I agree. I have him up there. And if you take this video as, well, Will Chamberlain just really wasn't that good, I mean, I don't agree, but that's your opinion, so I can't do anything about it. Whatever it is, I do hope you enjoyed this video and you appreciate the time I took into it. If you would like the video and subscribe to my channel, I would really appreciate it. And if this video does well and you want to see more, please let me know because I may be coming out with a similar video on Oscar Robertson very, very soon.